Subscribe to Lab X and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any episodes of Chemist in the Kitchen. Come here. Oh, he's afraid of the door. You want some? It's good. It's good for you. Oh, good boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he never gets food, so he's like, what are, what's the, what's the catch? <laughs> Welcome back to Chemists in the Kitchen. Today, we're going to be exploring the mechanics of milkshakes. I'm Kevin Aptowitz, professor of physics from Westchester University. Hi, I'm Natasha Cornejo. I am the assistant director of the National Summer Undergraduate Research Project at the University of Arizona. Hi, I'm Philip Duke. I'm a professor of mechanical engineering at Carnegie Mellon University. So the milkshake mechanics actually comes from uh, me being a mechanical engineer. One day I, I got a message from someone at Heinz, the ketchup company. Phil, he said, cell mechanics matters in ketchup. When you make ketchup, you actually mash the tomatoes and that's mechanics. And then you turn around and you flow it in pipes to put it into the bottle, and that's mechanics. Based on those two parameters alone, you can actually change whether you like or dislike ketchup. Today, we're gonna use that, and we're gonna explore how that applies to making milkshakes and milkshake mechanics. We are going to be making two different types of milkshakes. We'll be making one um, more traditional milkshake with ice cream, and then another taking out the ice cream for a healthier version uh, with xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is what we call a hydrocolloid, and what that means is that xanthan gum likes to interact with water, and it also likes to interact with itself, which will make it more viscous and thicker. From this, we would like to do a blind taste test with some of our family members to see if they can tell the difference between a traditional milkshake with ice cream and a non-traditional milkshake with xanthan gum. When you remove the ice cream from the milkshake, you need to think about the flavor that you're removing, but then equally important is the texture you're removing, uh, which gets into the milkshake mechanics. And that's where hopefully we'll see if xanthan gum is up to the job. I encourage people to take a look in their fridge and just and hunt around uh, because the thickness of a liquid is really important when you're trying to design a product to sell. So one way to solve that problem is to add a little bit of xanthan gum. It's in here. It's in, yeah, it's, it's in, in it's actually in, it's in the, the syrup that we're gonna be using. <laughs> You can use it in hot and cold, right? And so that's a really big advantage of a th as a thickening agent that you have over a lot of other ones. You guys ready to get started? I'm ready. You got it, you got it. All right, we're gonna get started with our first milkshake. This is our ice cream milkshake. So we're gonna have uh, a cup of ice cream, one ripe banana, a cup of milk, and two tablespoons of some chocolate syrup. One banana going in there. Oh, there was a whole chunk of ice cream in mine. Cheers. I'm very happy with this. I like this. Yeah. I could keep drinking this. Mm -hmm. Very happy. Chocolate, yeah. wow. chocolate and bananas and go together yeah, well. It's, it's, <laughs> what's your guys' texture like? I, I would like mine probably a little thicker, but it's not watery. I, I think it's good. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, ideal, like a little bit thicker. I guess you'd have to add more ice cream to get that thicker or to go less time on the actual mixing. Or less milk, too. You could add more ice cream or less yeah. milk. Let's try the next one. So now we're getting rid of our ice cream. Okay. <laughs> For flavor, we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. We'll add one teaspoon of vanilla extract, but then that doesn't really get us to the texture that we want. And so we're also gonna add 10 ice cubes and our mystery ingredient, our xanthan gum. Even more milk. Big fan of chocolate syrup. Well, it's funny because it actually sounds similar to the, the good one. The texture looks good. It's pretty thick, but you can definitely see it's liquidy. And the xanthan gum milkshake, you can definitely see has a lot more viscosity to it. It doesn't even fall out of the straw when I take some up. Whereas this one, when I do the same thing, you can see it pretty easily fall out. Cheers. <laughs> That is good texture. Mm -hmm. Good texture. That is fantastic. Yeah, that is fantastic. 
just adding sugar, right, will increase viscosity. The banana, you're shredding up into these teeny tiny parts, yep. right, which then are mm -hmm. floating around. So that also increases viscosity. Mm -hmm. Your ice cubes, you're chipping those into these tiny parts. And then finally, to kind of go over the top, we have our xanthan gum, which is attracting all those water molecules and is really helping to, to get in the way of the liquid water and also increasing the viscosity. I read something online about xanthan gum and um, like the shearing and it said like, at, like right after the shearing it's like thinner and then it thickens up after that and so like I have noticed the shakes get thicker. I don't know if you guys have noticed as you let your xanthan gum one sit a little bit it gets a little bit thicker. Well there's there's shear thickening and shear thinning oh, solutions which okay. are kind of cool. The great example of that is actually back to my Heinz ketchup. When you have a ketchup bottle and you're trying to get it out you hit it on the side of at the Heinz 57 and it's supposed to like come out. That's actually a physical property. That's not a joke, it's actually physics. Hmm. Because what happens is when you hit it, it actually becomes thinner and it comes out. So that force actually changes the viscosity locally of the ketchup. And so when you hit the side of the bottle, that's why it starts to flow out. That's the sheer thinning one then, right? Correct, because you're placing force on it and it thins out the, when you add the force, it actually causes the liquid to be thin. Okay, so we have two milkshakes here What's that I made. Difference? I can't tell you. You just have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> right before, it's... right before you get poisoned, I can't tell you. <laughs> okay. Oh, that one is so much better. Why? Why do you think that? Sweeter, fuller taste. This place will bland. Ask about the, the texture. Fair. Yeah, what's the texture difference? It's just thicker, harder to pull through and strong. Yeah. It doesn't taste like a milkshake. This is our real milkshake with our blue straw and our xanthan gum with our red straw. Both my dad and I like this one better. This is my daughter, Ariana, here. Hi. Your job is to try one green straw and one blue straw. You can have more than that. You can have plenty of that. That one's too thin. I agree. That one's better. All Good right, chocolate. so that was the ice cream one that they liked better. I would taste the chocolate more than the it's blue straw. Milk. Yeah, this one's like a thicker... Well, one had a richer texture yeah, like than the uh, green straw. Yeah. And how, how about the other one? How would you describe the texture of the other one? Thin. Yeah, liquidy. It was definitely smoother, yeah. Yeah. I could have taste, I could have tasted chocolate as well. So the flavor was different also, not mm -hmm. just the texture. Yeah. Thank you, taste testers. Yeah, this is my uh, wife, Katie. Hi. Hey, Katie. This guy is more appealing visually. Okay. That one, uh, like the the icy molecules are a little bit intense. Yeah. I would say this one is definitely more delicious. Mm -hmm. This one is more visually appealing. It's interesting what you noted is the xanthan gum one actually is much more stable. Yes. Right? Because like this one had melted partly also. Right. Basically the fat and the ice crystals from the ice cream are creating the thickness of this one. And those can change uh, over time and separate. Whereas the, the xanthan gum really just thickens it up and um, it's, it's not temperature dependent. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. So I do think it's, you know, we're not just swapping out one cup of ice cream for one cup of milk. Mm -hmm. We're also adding those 10 ice cubes, mm -hmm. which I think also adds a dilution factor to the flavor profile because you're adding yeah. all this water. So it sounds like we, we were able to get the texture right, mm -hmm. uh, but that you, there's more experimenting needed mm -hmm. to get the flavor profile. You might have to add more sugar and, and maybe even add some more chocolate syrup. Like freezing milk into ice cubes, like that might, yeah, yeah that might kind of get you yes. that, huh. that texture that you're looking for. For me personally, I'd probably just increase the xanthan gum. And, and since I like chocolate, I'd probably put more chocolate in because it's uh, add that sweet and fit flavor. Today, we looked at the mechanics of making milkshakes. What we found is that adding xanthan gum in place of ice cream as a thickening agent does in fact work. Uh, we also found um, an observation that we had was that the flavor profile of the vanilla ice cream is difficult to mimic. I think that the really fun thing about this is it, it absolutely proves the mechanics make a difference. The way that texture kind of feels and works is really important inside the palate and eating. It just changes sometimes whether you like or dislike things. Not only can you thicken your milkshakes, but you might be able to thicken some other things uh, that you're preparing in your kitchen using xanthan gum. So cheers everyone. It was awesome hanging out with you guys and getting a chance to mess around with milkshake mechanics. Cheers. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thanks you too. It was lots of fun.